This month, the Real Estate Institute says housing prices are back at a record high. Now, is that good news or bad news? Probably depends on whether you're buying or selling, but the big international credit rating agency, Standard & Poor's, thinks it could be bad news. Last week, Standard & Poor's cautioned our banks about their high level of exposure to the property market, saying they run the risk of a sharp fall, or what some politely call a correction, in housing prices. The new Reserve Bank Governor, Graham Wheeler, has been preaching a similar message. He thinks our house prices are overvalued on some measures. And Finance Minister Bill English has been even blunter. He says the housing market isn't working. But none of this seems to be registering with the sellers and the buyers. Prices are up, so are sales. And the time it takes to move a property is the only thing that seems to be going down. To get a street-level view of the situation, Selwyn Manning's been talking to the Real Estate Institute's Residential Rookie of the Year, Robin Elson. Uh, Robin Elson, welcome to the program. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you recently won the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand's Award for Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Um, how did that come, apart, come, to, come to pass? Um, gosh, I think hard work. Um, I really wanted to get into real estate. I really wanted to run my own business. Yes. And so I just put my all into it, really. I yeah. dedicated my whole life, <laughs> really, yeah. last year to real estate and didn't see my friends very often. But um, no, it was good. I wanted to um, establish my own business mm. and just really put all my focus into that. And uh, I think hard work pays off. Yeah, yeah. so you, you looked for a, a good company and then you uh, worked out a particular area that you'd like to work in or was an opportunity become available? Yeah, I, I chose the company that I wanted to work with. I chose Custom Residential because I really liked their brand and yeah. I really liked um, when I met with the manager, John Wills, I really liked his ethos and his perspective on real estate. And what is that ethos? Um, it's actually doing a better job for fewer clients. Yeah. So we're not, I guess, a large franchise company. We really do, I think, put a lot more into the way we market and package a property for sale. Yeah. And from a marketing perspective, that really appealed to me. Right. Now, um, you represent the heart of Auckland at a time where the market's absolutely booming, obviously. Um, and that's um, Eden Terrace, Kingsland, Mount Albert, um, Freeman's Bay, Ponsonby kind yeah, of area. Yeah, a little bit in there. Um, what's, what's driving up this market at the moment? If, what, what, what's your view on that? What, what are the things that are making the houses so expensive? Yeah, so I guess um, if I look at the difference between um, last year, 2011, when I started in, this, in the industry, yes. and 2012, um, what we've seen throughout that time is sustained low levels of supply. Mm. So a very low level of listings coming on the market. That's been the reality for the last two years that I've been in the industry. So that means there are more people wanting to buy a home than there are homes for sale. Absolutely. Mm. And I, mean, I really noticed it from the start of 2012, running my first open homes coming back from the summer break in February, I was amazed at the level of buyers coming through those open homes. And it really did signal to me that the market had very much changed. Mm. And changed from in, in what way? What was before? Um, I think before we did have good buyer interest on properties, but perhaps we had for one property, say, two or three buyers. Mm. In, in, that, in some cases, we now have twice the amount of buyers chasing a property. Um, so there's increased buyer confidence, there's increased, increased number of people actually chasing those properties in these particular areas. Okay, and what, what, are we looking to at better homes for sale compared to say a few years ago? Yeah, well I think that a lot of people have invested a lot of time and money yeah. into their property over the last several years. Um, it was interesting, I had a buyer through one of my open homes on the weekend who was talking about the changes in Westmere. Um, and the changes of the price and property in that area has yeah. increased significantly. And he said to me, you know, it's not just capital gain and the area pushing up. You know, people have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars mm. in actually renovating their property, making it a better, a better product at are the they, end of the day. Are they doing that with, uh, with selling in mind? No, I don't mm. think so. I think a lot of people have looked at real estate as a way of... Well, they, they buy to get into the market. They look at what's, what's actually going to work for me and my budget and what can I do to actually make this home work for me and my family. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge driver for the majority of people in the Auckland market. Yes, I think there are also people who are, are in the market to make money out of property and are looking mm. for do-up opportunities, something that they can give a spruce mm. up and then sell on to meet market mm. demand. Mm. Well, let, let's look at the marketing to the various groups in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, the first, first off, let's look at the market stability. 
And I, some people say that the, this bubble that is growing bigger and bigger has got to burst at some stage. You know, ha, ha, have some people missed their opportunity of getting into housing in this Auckland area? Well, look, I, I think certainly over the last year, and if I look at Kingsland as an area, yes, it has been a significant rise on the, ent the price mm. of an entry level property. So um, really now for Kingsland, if you're after a character villa, you know, it's very hard to find something at an entry level mm. at under $700,000. So not to say that those opportunities don't exist because you do occasionally see a property which may have missed its mark mm. on marketing or may not have been presented well for sale, which is there as an opportunity for people if they're watching. Mm. Um, however, as a general trend, yes, there's been a, a strong rise in property prices. But what I would say to those buyers who are looking to get in is that they may not have missed their opportunity yet. And you may need to look at what your what your budget is and what can you realistically afford mm. and be creative about it. I mean, I think we've got to come into it as first home buyers from mm. that perspective, not looking for the dream house. Mm. Let's look at something which you can- A stepping stone? A stepping stone, absolutely. Mm. What can you buy, improve value of, and use as a home for two to three years perhaps, okay. and then use that to move into your your so, longer term property. So it's almost like entry in as a first home buyer is almost a speculative type of arrangement, is that correct? I think it's a good approach mm. for a first time buyer mm. to, to look at it that way. Mm. Um, I think for a lot of people, you can look at property in two ways. I mean, yes, the dream is to own your own wonderful family home. Mm. And yes, we all have, well, I think the majority of people have that dream to own that property. but that's not using property as a stepping stone mm. necessarily mm. and I think you need to work to get to that point mm. where you're able to afford that property. Now a lot of people would be thinking oh my goodness you know uh, $700,000 I've been saving and saving and saving I've got together perhaps you know those who are able to afford it perhaps $50,000. Mm -hmm. How do they get into a market like this as a first home buyer without any real big commitment experience and behind them. Yeah. Are the banks lending huge amounts still or are they starting to be selective about the equity proportions? I think the banks are still um, looking at equity proportions quite carefully mm. against your income. Um, however, money is a lot cheaper mm. than what it was. Mm. Um, so there's a balance between those two factors. Um, but I think for anyone looking to get into the market, you've got to decide, do you want location? Mm. Or do you want the, the family home? Do you want mm. a bigger property? Mm. For and some people, you know, they coined that phrase, location, 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 you know, that, that it's the all important thing. Are you suggesting that sometimes on a fringe is mm. actually a wiser bet of getting into, say, moving into the Auckland area? Absolutely. So I think there's still some great opportunities that exist in Waterview, mm. Avondale. Te Aratu Peninsula, I think, is still a great opportunity yeah, to buy I, into. I know a lot of people who say, man, I love Te Aratu because of the views and things like that. It's um, a great area. Um, now, with, with the marketing, like we mentioned, we'd, we'd look at this. Um, on your website, you state, and I'll, I'll just read directly from that, before every sale, I think very carefully about who is going to buy this particular property. So um, wh what kind of people are you seeing at the moment that are positioning to purchase a house in your area in this really hot Auckland market? Well, I get a good range of um, buyers actually. So I do deal with a lot of first time buyers, mm. which is great. Um, I also deal with a lot of investors. But I also deal with a lot of those families who are trading up and wanting yep. that property with a bigger section, um, wanting that character home. So I do deal with a range of buyers and obviously every time I list the property, I think very carefully yeah. about what demographic's going to be pursuing it um, and what I can do within the marketing to make sure it's really connecting with those buyers. Right. And, and if you were going to look at it, uh, the majority still people who live in Auckland and are trading into an, or buying into a new home or are they from outside of Auckland or from overseas perhaps Kiwis coming back to New Zealand um, with, with that big you know, income that they may have earned overseas. What, what's, if you're going to stereotype it, what's driving this, this type of demand that's there? Well, I, I think the buyers are across all those groups that you've mentioned. 
um, perhaps there are more people coming back to Auckland now than what there were four years ago. I mean, I wouldn't really be able to comment because I only moved to Auckland myself <laughs> about yeah. four years ago. So um, I think uh, there is a nice cross-section of buyers all looking for something. I think there's increased, well, there's just increased noise around the property market. I mean, even with the media, mm. there's a lot of reporting around mm. property and maybe that in itself is causing people to think more about Hmm, mm. maybe it's time to make a change or mm, maybe actually th now mm. I, I really need to get into the property right. market because we're on an upward cycle. And someone on the inside of this, from your gut instinct, do you see that it's going to ease off a little bit in the near future or is it going to continue as it has been, say, in the last 12 months? Well, I mean, I think in the last 12 months, it, there, there certainly has been a lot more buyer activity, mm. but that's been against, I guess, low level of supply. Mm. I think we've seen actually supply lift over the last couple of weeks. And the politicians are starting to talk in this way about increasing supply. So, yeah. So yeah. If, if someone was going to be investing into the market at this stage, say you had an investor coming along, is it still, in, for an investor, is it, a, is it a safe bet that they're going to actually make some pretty good money in the next couple of years if the politicians are starting to say, well, we're going to increase supply here? Well, I don't think... Um, supply is going to reach the levels that it needs to to actually dampen the price of their investment. If they're looking at the investment from a buy and sell point of view, so they want to buy the property now and sell it in a few years time for capital gain, my prediction is that th we, are, we are still on an upward property cycle. Mm. Yes, there's been a sharp increase in prices over the last 12 months. I, I suspect that may slow ever so mm. slightly, but I don't think it's going to track back. Mm. I think it'll just continue to pace up, perhaps at a more steady trend. Okay. Um, well, when we're, we're talking these big numbers, and particularly if they're going to be sustaining, is, is there a trend where people are prepared to actually be borrowing a lot more, a bigger mortgage than perhaps we've ever seen before? With record prices, are we seeing record mortgages in behind those? Well, actually, from a lot of the buyers that I've spoken to, um, and in terms of their budget, a lot of people actually say to me, oh, well, look, Robin, the bank has, bank has said that I can borrow into the eights, but I'm looking at the future. You know, my, my wife's probably going to have a baby in a few years' time. We want to buy in the sevens. And I think people, are, even though mm. the banks may be willing to lend them more money, I think people are actually still learning the lessons of the, the global financial crisis and they're being a little bit more cautious with how much money the banks are willing to lend them and how much they're willing to take. Mm. So I think we're dealing with a, a more educated buyer perhaps. Mm. And on the other side of the ledger, are you seeing uh, people cashing in? They're realising they're seeing the house down the road is going for such and such, um, perhaps two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 above the capital valuation. Mm. And are people cashing in on that and moving out? Well, look, I think... Uh, Perhaps, maybe, a lot of, uh, some people are looking at that, but the majority of people who are selling are selling because they need to sell. They want to move into a bigger house or perhaps they want to move into a smaller house. And at the end of the day, mm. although market confidence has increased, I think people choose to sell because it's right for them mm. and it's right for their lifestyle. So, mm. yeah, I don't think necessarily there's been a, a rush to cash in on what we're, what we're seeing. Mm. And if someone, if, if the, that was a trend, would that affect the, the pricing trends that you're seeing? Well, it, if, if there was the rush to put onto the market, um, there would be a, a, a rise in supply. Mm. So perhaps then you would see some change in prices achieved for property. But then also you've got to look at vendor motivation. So just because the house goes on the market doesn't mean it's necessarily going to sell. If they don't achieve the price that they want, then they may just pull it from the market. So, yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, people largely sell because it's right for them and it's right for, for what they're planning to do in the future. Robin Nelson, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Howard Manning talking to Residential Real Estate Rookie of the Year, Robin Elson. And that's all on the Beatson interview for now. Thanks for your company. See you at the same time next week. Cheers. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.